Healy, and why is it important to be in phase with natural cycles? And according to science, this is how it all began. Many billions of years ago, from a singularity, an extremely dense point of energy and matter, there was a big explosion, the Big Bang, and the universe came into being. In the beginning, there were no stars, no galaxies, no living things. Just hydrogen, helium, and lots of energy. The first stars and galaxies, probably appeared about 200 million years, after the Big Bang. The universe began to create its own rhythms, some of which, formed the Sun, and the Solar System. Gradually, amidst these rhythms of the universe, life on Earth began. Us humans took longer to appear, but here we are. We too were born from the rhythms of the universe. Day, night, seasons, and the lunar cycle, are some of the cyclical phenomena of nature, that mark and determine, the routines we live by. The human organism, has its own biological clock, that depends on the solar cycle, lunar cycle and daily cycle. Our biological clock, is the great conductor of the redox cycle. Anyway, this pulsating universe, operates beneath human consciousness, in the cellular structures, and, that is why it is so important, not only to understand these natural rhythms, but also to be in phase with them. Because of this, I developed the natural cycle frequency set. So, let's understand some concepts in order to take full advantage of the natural cycle. Day and night, seasons, lunar cycle, are some of the cyclical phenomena of nature that mark and determine the routine of life of living beings. As I mentioned before, it's very important not only to understand these natural rhythms, but also to be in phase with them. So, let's understand what it means to be in phase. In mathematical terms, we say that the phase is given by the value of the function and its derivative at the point, at that point. It sounds a bit complex, but if you see this in a graph, it's easy to understand. Let's imagine we have two waves, wave A and wave B, with the same amplitude, frequencies and wavelength. Ok, so, if I move wave B and place it on the top of wave A, with one overlapping the water, we say that the waves are in phase. Ok, so, when in the overlap there is a mismatch, we say that they are not in phase or that they are out of phase, ok? So, in this slide, we put the waves back in phase. This makes it easy to understand the concept of being in phase or out of phase. When we put two waves together, we create a new wave that we call the resultant, or resultant wave. Uh, this slide shows the three main wave combinations and their resultant. So, when we are in phase, the resulting wave is amplified, so we say that the waves interfere constructively, ok? When two waves are out of phase, they interfe interfere dextractively and cancel each other out. This principle is used in the noise cancelling headphones. Yes. <laughs> and finally, an intermediate situation in which the resultant will always be smaller than in the first case. Ok, so, to understand the importance of being in phase, we have to understand another concept, the concept of redox, reduction, oxidation. But what, after all, is oxidation and reduction? Ok, oxidation, in a very simple way, refers to the loss of electrons. 
reduction, on the other hand, is the gain of electrons. Okay? This slide is a good summary of the redox process. Amazing, this slide. So, um, it is only important that they understand the general concept and that these are phenomena that happen constantly and are depend on each other. Okay? This is how our organism lives. It loosens and gains electrons in order to create a sublime current that we call life. It also happens in the magnetic field and in the chemical field. Let's now apply the two concepts we have learned. One, redox, and the second, being in phase. Let's admit that to have a healthy life, that range in terms of redox would be between minus one and one. In this example of the daily cycle, we see that we go from minus one, the highest level of a reduction, to one, which is the highest level of oxidation. What I want you to understand here is that the minus one and the one must be reached in order to have a current metabolism. Okay? This is really important. When my cycle hits one and minus one, all my organs have correct redox capacity. But if it doesn't hit, my organs are compromised in terms of redox, our live stream, okay? So we will now take a look at the three cycles, solar, luna, and daily, and apply the phase concept we have already learned. On the left side, we have our three natural cycles, and on the right side, we have the resulting from the sum of these three waves. As we remember, we define the ideal redox interval from minus one to one. That will be the hypothetical value of ideal electric current for life. As you can see, the resultant is between those values. It means that we are in phase with the three natural cycles. If, for some reason, I lose phase with the daily cycle, because, for example, I start doing directives to finish a job or to prepare for an exam at the university, the resultant no longer goes all the way from minus one to one. So I have a lower, so I have a lower than normal redox value, which could lead to a health problems. Okay? And if an additional to being out of phase, with the dialogue cycle, I'm also out of phase with Luna cycle, then I still have a more suboptimal resultant for healthy life, living. Sorry. Of course, if I miss this phase with all of these cycles, I will be in serious troubles and probably my life will be at risk. This is why it's so important to be aligned with natural cycles. It's because if the ideal redox value, which allows us to have the electric current to life healthily, is not reached, we cannot have a balanced energetic metabolism. Okay? So, that's all for today, and see you soon. <laughs>